We want to start looking at the rules and uses of negative exponents, and they're really not that bad. One thing's for sure, they're going to have to follow all the rules of regular exponents. There's not going to be any exceptions just for the negatives. Now consider this rule. x to the a times x to the b, remember, is x to the a plus b. That's a shortcut. For instance, x to the third times x to the second, we remember, is x to the fifth. Or x to the seventh times x to the one-th is x to the eighth. Well, what will happen with x to the fifth times x to the negative two, assuming that it has to follow all the rules of exponents? It's got to be x to the third, doesn't it? Because five plus negative two is three. So that's got to work if it's going to follow all the rules. So what does this negative exponent mean? Whatever it is, when we multiply it by x to the fifth, we get x to the third. Well, let's back up just a little bit and think about the word negative and the symbol negative. That symbol right there can be thought of as opposite, can it? Think about it. When do we use negatives? Well, not when you made money, when you did the opposite, when you lost money. We don't use it when we talk about above sea level, we talk about the opposite below sea level. Or the opposite of freezing or above freezing is below freezing. That's how we use negative. We use the opposite, don't we? The additive opposite of 5 to 8, that's the additive opposite when we add a negative. Well, what I propose to you, hold on, is that there are two negatives, two types of opposites. The number 5 has an additive opposite, negative 5, but it also has a multiplicative opposite, 1 over 5. Did you forget that? Negative 7 has an additive opposite, positive 7, but it also has a multiplicative opposite, 1 over negative 7. What about 2 thirds? He has two opposites also. Negative 2 thirds is his additive opposite. And his, I want to use a word here, reciprocal is his multiplicative opposite, 3 over 2. You know, well, what about we have a negative here? Well, so in general, when we find the additive opposite, if there's a negative, we take it away. If there isn't, we put one. When we find the multiplicative opposite, we just flip it, don't we? We don't take away a negative or add a negative. Remember, the additive opposite, we change the sign. The multiplicative opposite, we reciprocate. But one thing's for sure, there are two types of opposites in math. I don't understand. Well, if there's two types of opposites, hopefully you notice there's going to be two places we can put a negative in an expression. We're used to putting it down in front. But if we put it up in the exponent position, it must mean, and it does mean, the other type of opposite. So far, we've been using additive opposites. This is going to be the multiplicative opposite of the number. We call it the reciprocal. Remember the reciprocal of 2 thirds is 3 halves. Well. The number 5 is 5 over 1, so his reciprocal, 5 to the minus 1, is 1 over 5. That's what it means. That's what we use negative exponents for, to reciprocate. It's just going to be a different type of opposite. Let's go back to the problem that we began with. What happened? x to the fifth 
times x to the negative 2 must equal x to the third. What in the heck is x to the negative 2 really? Well, if that negative means a multiplicative opposite or reciprocal, it means 1 over x to the tooth. And it makes sense if you think about it. x to the fifth over x to the tooth, when we multiply that, we get x to the fifth and x to the tooth in the bottom and when we cancel by dividing by one what do we get? It makes sense, doesn't it? x to the minus two really means one over or the reciprocal of x to the two. Or in general x to the negative a is the multiplicative opposite of x to the a, or the reciprocal of x to the a. It's just 1 over x to the a. Let's try and do some problems with this. It's not that bad if you just remember that it means reciprocate. 6 to the minus 2 really just means a reciprocal of 6 to the tooth. Of course, 1 over 6 to the tooth is 1 over 36. That's not that bad. Notice with a negative exponent we get a very small number, don't we? How about 5 to the negative third power? Well, that's going to be the reciprocal of 5 to the positive third power. So 1 over 5 to the third going to be a very small number, 1 over 125. It's not a negative number, is it? It's a very small number. Go ahead. Make my day. Now let's review something real quick. 2 thirds to the fourth means 2 thirds times 2 thirds. How many times? 4 times. And of course it'll equal 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, 16 over 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, 16 over 81. That was easy. Well, what is 2 thirds to the minus 4? Remember what negative means when it's in the exponent position. Well, it means reciprocate. We still use the 4 though, so it'll be not 2 over 3, but 3 over 2, four times. Got to reciprocate all four of them. And not surprisingly, the answer is going to be 81 over 16, just the reciprocal. That's all the negative added in this case. What are you going to do with this problem? Don't get nervous on me. Just remember what the negative exponent means. Reciprocate. Oh, boy, Just remember to reciprocate negative exponents. If it's in the top, put it in the bottom. And if it's in the bottom, put it in the top. That 2 to the minus 3 will go downstairs. And that 7 to the minus 2 will go upstairs. And then you have positive exponents. That's simple. 7 to the tooth is 49 and 2 to the third is 8. That's all you have to do is reciprocate. It's starting to sneak up on you here, getting a little difficult. You have to remember to only reciprocate the negative exponents. Let's do a little bit at a time here. What are you going to do with him? He's going to go downstairs. What's going to happen with y to the first? Well, he's not negative. So don't reciprocate him. Leave him alone. Stays right where he is. z to the minus 1, he gets reciprocated. x to the fifth stays right where he is. He's a positive exponent. y to the negative tooth is downstairs, so it goes upstairs. And z to the minus 2 is downstairs, so it goes upstairs. 
Well, my hope is that now you know what to do. These two get together, as do these two, and z to the second and z to the first are going to somewhat cancel using your subtraction rule, and there's your answer. Let's look at this one. One at a time. He's going to go down because he's a negative exponent. Just reciprocate. Z to the minus 7 is going to go in the denominator. X to the 6th is a positive exponent. Leave him alone right where he is. And Z to the minus 2 will be reciprocated. Now this one ends up a little bit screwy because while these two get together, the other two cancel. Remember when we cancel, the answer goes where the largest one used to be. 7 minus 2 is 5. And we have z to the fifth, but we can't just write that as the answer, remember. You have to have a numerator. Warning, warning, warning. So you add 1 in this case. So be careful there. Cool. Got it? Don't let this scare you. Remember, do what's in parentheses first. Okay? Follow the order of operations. So we'll worry about that negative 3 later. 2 just stays right where he is. x to the minus 2 goes down. z to the minus 7 goes down. x to the 6th stays right where he is, and z to the minus 2 goes up. Now we're still not done what's in parentheses yet. So just bring that down. What's going to happen here? 2 is going to stay where he is. He has nobody to cancel with. The x to the 2nd and the x to the 6th will get together, and these two will cancel. We did one like that just previous. Now we've done everything we can do that's in parentheses. Now what am I gonna do? Let's do the negative 3 a little bit at a time. Now note that that negative has power over the whole problem, doesn't it? Look at the size of those parentheses. So I'm going to flip the whole problem. That's what the negative says to do. Just flip everybody, and then we'll raise them to the third power. No, I can raise them to the third power. 2 to the third, x to the eighth to the third, and z to the fifth to the third. And my answer will be, because 2 to the third is 8. It's not that bad. We won't give you anything any harder than that, okay? Go try the homework.